Hi, this video will introduce the new Arnold Render View for Maya. So it's a new viewer that is still work in progress and that is meant to solve several limitations faced by Arnold users with Maya's native Render View. And we've also added several features uh, allowing to improve the look dev, the shading, the lighting process specifically for Arnold. So since it's the first version for now, uh, it can be found in menu Arnold Experimental M2A Render View. And now you can see that the render appears in this new window, the Arnold render view, instead of native one. And then, for example, if you start moving your camera around, you will notice that this is behaving just like IPR. So uh, the render is being updated automatically whenever you change something in Maya, and it's appearing uh, progressively. So starting at low resolutions and then increasing the anti-aliasing progressively. But that's something you can control, actually, with the option Continuous Updates, which is enabled by default. If you disable it, the render view will no longer be affected by the changes in Maya. Both are completely desynchronized, and you will decide when you want to trigger the render again and synchronize both by using the option render shortcut F5 or using this button here and what's important is that only the nodes that have been changed will be updated so it's not going to re-export the whole scene so it can be a very useful node to keep editing your scene without interrupting your render all the time and just decide when you want to re-render again then you can remove the option progressive refinement and to have only the final anti-aliasing step as you would do for your final rendering and here well this is behaving just like the Maya render command so you can see that this single window can support both IPR and the Maya render just by choosing the options uh, appropriately <coughs> you can abort the render with uh, the escape shortcut or with this button here so it's interrupting the render it's this works also for progressive refinement of course and then if you abort the render here uh, and you can do any change you want in your scene since the continuous update is off it's only going to restart when you decide to but if you turn the continuous updates on then if you abort your rendering it's just going to pause it until you choose to do another change and then of course it's going to be updated <coughs> but this is actually a bit more than a simple image buffer because you can even select your geometries from the render view so if you pick on your final image you will see that some geometries are being temporarily highlighted and it's selecting them in Maya so you can pick on your image and then in the attribute editor do whatever change you want to do and then pick another geometry do some other changes and it's a really useful way to work because it's much more natural to select what you want to select from the image that you see instead of having to go back through the viewport or finding the object in the outliner and mainly if your scene is complex of course so if you want it to refresh even faster you can crop a region by pressing the shift key and then dragging the region you want in the viewer then the render is only going to be updated in this region so of course it goes faster this way and if you want to clear the region and re-render the whole scene you can press the arrow key uh, besides the, the crop region you can also do this by pressing this button here so now you can drag the region and then it comes back to the previous behavior so it's only rendering in this region okay so what else you can see that at the bottom of the image buffer there is a status bar giving some information about your render you have the resolution the different sampling values the name of the camera that is being used and the zoom factor and when the render is finished instead of rendering you will see the the render time of the last anti-aliasing step we thought that this would be the useful information you can even have more information from the menu stages bar display pixel information and then just below your mouse cursor you see the XY coordinates and mainly the RGBA values as they are returned by Arnold so it can be useful to see that then you can also change your render camera without re-exporting your scene you can really change that um, as much as you want and come back to the original camera and you can display the AOVs so let's add some some AOVs from the render settings In the tab AOVs so I'm adding the um, direct diffuse specular indirect diffuse and specular let's add them 
and now from this list here I can see the different ones so that's the direct diffuse, direct specular, indirect diffuse and that's something I can do without having to re-export my scene just uh, I switch from one AOV to another uh, I can move around uh, with uh, by just displaying a single AOV then come back to another one while the render is in progress so that's a really useful feature that wasn't supported in the native uh, render view and of course I can also display the RGBA channels either from this menu or using this button here that goes from red to green to blue to alpha and back again to RGBA so this image buffer is displaying a, a 2D image that I can manipulate as in other softwares with the alt key so if I press the alt key and le left mouse button I'm panning my image with the right mouse button I'm zooming out here I can see the zoom factor being updated I can also use the wheel uh, I can frame the image to my window with frame all, it's the hotkey A, or if I drag a region and press F, I can frame only the selected region. Let's frame all again. So basically I'm manipulating a 2D image, but if I turn on 3D manipulation, then now uh, I'm with the alt key, I'm now manipulating my render camera in 3D, just like if I was in, in the viewport. So I can, uh, with the left mouse button and Alt key, I rotate. With the right mouse button, I zoom in, zoom out. And with the middle mouse button, I pan my camera, just like in my viewport. So as you can see, I don't even need the viewport now. I can really move around my scene with, my, my, um, with the 3D manipulation. So another option is to store uh, some snapshots. So here I just stored a snapshot. I can store another one and then the last one and now I have this slider that is going to be of improved of course and that allows to go through the, the image that, that I've stored I can also see that the stages bar is displaying the information for each of these images so I can keep some information and then I can delete them using the trash button and another option of course is really to save that image to disk using the menu uh, file save image and now I can save my image with several different formats. The one that is missing for now is EXR. Uh, it will be supported in, in future versions. So now regarding the color space on which I'm working, you can see there's a loot button here in the toolbar and when I press it, uh, by magic another window appears with a few uh, uh, controls like gamma, exposure, everything related to uh, loot and color corrections and uh, these are settings that are not applied to my final batch rendering it's just for the display color space can be linear, sRGB, rec 709 or I can even choose a, a 3D loot file for now we support only cube files and these are files that can be uh, created from other softwares like Nuke or other and we'll surely keep adding more and more controls here as this is really important pipeline wise well then we have other background uh, settings so let's hide my background and I can see that my alpha channel here shows the shape of the character so I can choose between a background color so I can choose a gray color for example I can also choose a checkerboard like in other painting softwares so you can see a checkerboard behind the transparency or I can even choose an image so let's search for a completely random image oh yeah that's just a guy who loves kicking some ass <laughs> so now I can well move my camera and adjust the camera to my uh, background okay let's remove it and here I'm not seeing which buckets are being rendered sometimes so if I want to display it for debugging for example I can enable the show rendering buckets uh, option that displays some squares one one color per thread so yeah that can be useful for debugging and talking about debug there's a last feature called uh, debug shading let's remove the loot window so debug shading is really useful it overrides temporarily uh, the shaders by some um, utility ones for debugging here it's a basic display now an occlusion that's not changing anything in my scene that's not meant to have uh, an occlusion pass for example it's just for debugging to inspect the scene see if there are penetrations or so can display the wireframe the normal UVs primitive ID barycentric objects 
and the last mode called isolate selected which uh, is quite interesting um, it isolates the node that you have selected and uh, shows you its contribution in the the final rendering so here I'm selecting some shapes either from the render view or from the the Maya viewport and it's showing it's only shading these shapes and everything else as a black mat but I can also select some shaders so in the hyper shade I can select uh, the different materials in my scene and see the really the contribution of each of them so that's really useful if you have a scene with a bunch of shaders you can really see which ones are used and uh, what's their contribution I can also select actually every shading node in in the shading tree so it can be textures uh, color blending or noises whatever and that becomes really useful with complex shading trees because I can see the um, what every single node is supposed to do see its contribution and to understand what it's supposed to do and also I can eventually tweak specifically for example a noise or a color, color blending until I have exactly what I want so for example here I have a um, a specular texture which is a, a tech uh, which is binding to my <coughs> my reflection color and uh, for example I, I rotate I can see the effect only of this map so that's really interesting I really understand what I'm doing I can tweak until I have what I want and then again I see the the result on the on the root material for example so um, very interesting features and um, ab apart from that I can also select uh, lights so here I have only a single light uh, a dome light so it's not doing anything special so let's add another light in my scene for example a directional light and um, uh, now since I've selected this directional light I'm seeing only the contribution of this one I'm not seeing anymore the, the sky dome so I can tweak it, um, do any change I, I want only see its specular contribution for example Or now I'm only inspecting this light as a solo light if I select the sky dome again I see the sky dome and of course it works if I have tons of lights in my scene that's when it, where it becomes more useful and now I can see my final render with all my lights accumulated okay so that's uh, the current version of uh, Arnold render view we are now waiting for your feedback to see uh, what can be improved given uh, everyone's production needs.